What's up, guys? It's your boy Melvin in our client in our review today. I mean, well, since we're still in May, I want to do this, but well, it's been a while. But hey, I'm gonna talk about this the, the Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. Yeah, there are a bit. There are a lot of people talking about it, but hey, I get get a shot of this doing a review. Hey, and since this, this is gonna be like a big one because like there's three seasons, I'm gonna, I'm gonna divide it into three parts, like. You have part one is gonna be season one, part two, season two, and part three, season three. Make it much easier. Then make it a 60 minute video, which, oh boy, you'll be eating popcorn and falling asleep after this. And before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, do you walk the way of the Mandalore? This is the way. Or the old Nux will say, I have spoken. So yeah. To start off, we're gonna start with the first season, which is that came out back in I think it was around 2019, 2020. Before the pandemic started. But yeah, y'all remember that bullshit. And I think it's all the Start with the first one that started the season one of The Mandalorian. <sniffs> What's it about? Well, it takes place five years after Return of the Jedi, which, you know, the fall of the Empire, there's still remnants of the Empire. I mean, we are our titular character, Din Djarin, or he's known as The Mandalorian, played by Pedro Pascal. Which he worked, he's a mandolin bounty hunter. Had to clean a bounty for a guild for a guild leader, Griff Karga, in charge of the bounty hunters guild in Navarro. Which remember, we're going to like you know like this is three seasons, right? Different chapters of the story because again, it's a big one. So the show's created by Dave Filoni, which. Hey, this guy does the work. He does magic. Which, it was actually green-led by Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy. And it's interesting to discuss the idea with Dave Filoni, who was executive producer of the anime series Star of the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Back in 2018, Lucas announced that Faro well, Ryan executive produced the series, and Filoni, Kennedy, and Colin Wilson also executive produced in May. Faro and said he would run the four, four of the series, eight episodes before being officially hired for the project. Of course, this was mentioned after talks during the live action remake of The Lion King. Which the season had a budget of a hundred million dollars. As for the casting, Rose began to be cast in the title role. Peter Pascal was currently betraying the Vain Mandalorian back in November 2018. Pascal initially thought he was being cast as the Star Wars character Boa Fett due to the visual similarities between the character and the Mandalorian. But the latter is actually a separate character named Ninjaran, which of course, we also have Gina Carano and Nick Nolt joins the series, cast later in November. And also other characters calling Carano Notel, we had Giancarlo Esposi as the main villain, Moff Gideon, who's been the villain all three seasons. Emmy Swallow as the armorer, who's the leader of the the Children of the Watch, a segment of Mandalorians that follows the ancient way of the Mandalore of their people during the ancient time of the Mandalore of Mandalore. She's also the armor who forges armor from Beskar. We have Carl Weber, Amen Abadi, and Werner Hezzarg. So what how it takes place? Well, it's story time, kiddies. So we go first with chapter one, where we meet our titular hero, completing a bounty for Grief Kaga, who's the leader 
of the Bounties Bounty Hunter Guild. What is the loud mouthful, you ask me? Car Priest Cargo is played by Carl Weaver. What's he learned? When he gets Mando a new assignment with a higher bounty, he meets up with the client, played by Warner Herzog, the believed to be an Imperial Warlord, I think. We also meet with, with bodyguards, Stormtrooper bodyguards. <laughs> we also meet Dr. Pushing, an Imperial scientist, played by Am Amin Alberti, requiring that the specimen, the target, to be bring alive, who is supposed to be like 50 years old. Of course, give him his his reward, Beskar. Soon he takes that Beskar to the armor in their hidden covert. To the armor, played by Emily Swallow. Which, of course, one of the other Mandalorians, I forget, Potsvizla. And guess who's played that? He's, he's played by Faro, describing what happened to Mandalore. Called the Great Purge. And this is the first time we heard about the fate of Mandalore. Soon, Mando goes to the planet. And guess what he runs into? An Ugnaught, most of farmer named Quill, who was a former servant free from the Empire. Which, of course, Helps them reveal where the location is. <laughs> when Quill directs Mando to the heavily defended encampment, he's not the only one because he got he got an, an assassin droid called IG-11 also aiming for the target as well. Due to Mando's distaste and hate for droids, which it'll be a shocker why he hates droids. He's he has no choice but to team up with IG-11, match to feed the guards, and guess what he find out? When he find the specimen, which is 50 years old, but was small, a child, over 50 years old. And well, and lo and behold, if you don't recognize that species, you must be never been a Star Wars fan because... He is the same species as Master Yoda and Yaddle. Another species of their kind. 50 years old and looks like a toddler. IG-11 wants to assassinate, kill it, but before he can, it can do it, Mando just shot him, shot the droid through the head, and killed the droid, term, and he terminates it. And taking the child alive. Next chapter, where it's called The Child, is written by John Farrow. Mando returns to the child's ship until, guess what happens? His ship, the Razor Crest, has been stripped for parts by Jawas. And these are off world Jawas. Unlike the Jawas you know, like in Tatooine, off world Jawas are from, they're just from Tatooine, but they left the planet and go to a different world. Hence the name Off World Jawas. Mando attacks the Sandcrawler, but fortunately, one of the Jawas managed to shot a electro cannon at him, which of course knocks him out. Next day, Quill helps Mando locate the Jawas and negotiate the return to pieces in exchange to retrieve an egg of a rhino cirros. A rhino like Mudhorn in exchange for stolen parts. The stolen parts. He and the child find the Mudhorn cave, but the beast managed to attack him and damage his armor. After a prolonged battle, the Mudhorn is about to kill Mando until the child uses the force to eliminate the beast, allowing the surprised Mandalorian to stab it, stab and kill the beast. He collects the egg and takes it to the Jawas, who cracks it open and eats it inside. With his ship com components returned, the Mando works with Quill to repair the ship 
and they managed to leave the planet with the child. Oh boy. Chapter 3 is called The Sin. It was written, directed by De Deborah Chow and written by John Farrow. It was back in 2019. Mando delivers the child to the client on Navarro and collects his bounty of 20 bars of Beskar steel. Characteristically, Mando asks about the client's plan for the child and is told that there that that is not his concern. Return to the Mandalorian convert, the Mandalorian in covert. The armor replaces and upgrades Mando's damaged armor and weapons using most of Beskar steel. Mando accepts a new job from Karga and prepares to depart. Feeling guilty about banning the child, he returns to the client's base and kills the stormtroopers guarding it. He rescues the child from Dr. Pershing's laboratory where it was experimented on. But he says not to kill the doctor. Rescue the child calls the other bounty hunter. Has, okay. The bounty hunter has some type of device which helps them track down their their target. Says the child is a target and has to leave the, where the camp is. Ding, 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 ding. The hunt is on. Oh boy. On the way back, he gets ambushed. Mando gets ambushed by Grief Karga and other bounty hunters who demand that he hand over the child. He refuses and a firefight starts. Outnumbered and cornered, Mando is saved by the other Mandalorians from his covert, attacking the bounty hunters and allowing him to escape and get off the planet with the child. Arriving at Chapter 4, called Sanctuary, was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard, and also read by John Farrow. A fun fact, the heavy artillery Mandalorian was actually played by John Farrow, who soon earned the name Paz Vizsla. Another member of House Vizsla, related to Pre Vizsla, and also... A descendant of, of Tar Vizsla, the one who created the Dark Saber. We'll get to that in season two. Around season two, season three, right there for next time. But hey, we're sticking to part one, so okay. After arriving at sparsely populated forest planet Shorgan, Mando encounters an ex-rebel alliance shock trooper turned mercenary Cardoon, played by Car Carano. Dune is hi in hiding and asks the Mando, Mando to leave so as to not draw attention to the planet. He prepares to leave but is approached by desperate fishermen who offer him to hire him. They want him to drive a band of Clantunian raiders that have been attacking their village. He accepts the job in exchange for lodging. He uses their credits to enlist Dune's help. <laughs> they are housed by Omora, a widow mother, and the Mando confides her in, in her that no one has seen his seen him without his helmet since his tri since his covert. Took him at, in as an orphan child. Mando and Dune helped the villagers drive the raiders away. It turns out the raiders have a have a a captured a Imperial ATST walker, which of course became a tricky problem. But soon the villagers, along with Mando and Dune, managed to dis defeat the raiders and destroy the. Imperial ATST Walker that the Raiders were using a few weeks later. Peace was restored. Mando plans to leave the child with the villagers, but fortunately, a guild bounty hunter finds him but is killed by Doom. Realizing the child is not safe in the village, Mando departs with the child. 
We head to Chapter 5, The Gunslinger. It was directed by Dave Filoni and written by Dave Filoni. It was actually pretty funny. Mando defeat at he's encountered a dogfight with two bounty hunters pursuing him. Mads to defeat them. He lands his ship, down ship, and repair dock run by mechanic Peli Moto, who they well she would be a recurring character in in the later seasons. On Mos Eisley and Tatooine. And she's played by a by Amy Sadaris. Hmm. And this is gonna be a fun adventure. <laughs> of course he seeks work in the cantina, which is the, the faint cantina you see in episode four. To pay for the repairs, me inspiring bounty hunter Toto Kalakin, who's tracking Ifa's elite master assassin, elite mercenary, and master assassin Fennec Shan. Kalakin needs to catch Shan to join the guild, and Mando agrees to help in exchange for the bounty award. They capture Shan in the desert, but she destroys one of their speeder bikes while Mando retrieves a dewbax. For transportation, Shan tells Kalakin that Mando betrayed the guild by stealing the child, making the bounty on him and the child with more than her. Shan offers to help Kalakin capture the Mando if she set free, but he shoots her instead instead and rides the rain speed her bike back to the docks. Taking Moto and as Mando return, he managed to take Moto Pelly and the child hostage. Mando arrives, disoriented Kelligan with a flare gun and kills him. He uses Kelligan money to pay Pelly for the repair that leaves Tatooine. As they leave, we get a shot of of Shannon's wounded body and a mysterious figure walking by towards her. And this is a familiar character who will soon appear in season two, which you guys will be excited and giddy <coughs> about it. Soon we get to chapter six, The Prisoner, directed by Rick Famu. Yiwa, both story by Christopher Yost, teleplay by Christopher Yost and Rick Famuya. Yeah, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Mando contacts his former partner, Ram Malk, for work and is offered a place in a five man job. He's joined by ex Imperial sharpshooter Mayfield. Devarodian strongman Berg, droid pilot Q90, and a Twilight Knight expert Zeon for a mission to rescue Zeon's brother, Quinn, a prisoner of the New Republic. The team infiltrates the prison ship, fights off security droids, and kills the ship's security chief, though not before he triggers a security beacon, which of course screws up. The crew rescues Quinn, but double crosses Mando. Q90 finds a message from Karga to the Mandalorian discussing the child and finds the child in the Mando in Mando's ship. Meanwhile, Mando escapes, defeats each crew member, and captures Quinn. Mando leaves Mayfield, Berg, and Zewin locked up on the prison transport before delivering Quinn to Ran. He departs with his payment, while Ram immediately launches a fire to kill the Mando, but discovers the New Republic Beacon on Quinn, and a trio of Republic, Republic X-Wing fighters arrive and attack Ram's station. <laughs> One of the things he likes is the sister mentions she actually slept with Mando. I think... I don't know who asked the question. Berg, or... 
Mayfest, what does he look like? They no telling. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we reached to chapter seven, The Reckoning. It was directed by Deborah Chow and written by John Faru. The Mandalorian Mando receives a message from Karga, whose town of Navarro has been overrun by the client's troopers. Karga proposes that the Mandalorian uses the child as bait in order to kill the client and free the town. In return, Karga would stop his guild from hunting the Mando, hunting Mando and the child. Since seeing a trap, Mandalorian recruits Dune and Quill. Which could bring along a rebuild and reprogram IG-11 to protect the child. They meet Karga and his associates. But are attacked by flying creatures. Of course, Karga is injured, but if the creature bites him, bites, their their bite is venomous, unfortunately. Actually, we get a scene here where I think it was Mando and Cara Dune are playing arm wrestling and somehow the child starts to give it a bit pissy. And Force Choke is Dune, literally, you see his face, like he's mad. He just Force Choke her but he wants to kill her. And when Mando knows him, knows him doing that, he doesn't stop, which of course... That's when Quill reveals that he's seen something like this before, which of course she insults him when was your master until he mentioned he was a slave from the Empire, so <laughs> bitter rivalry, but hey, come on. You, that's when you see Grogu with that pissed off face when he's forced choking somebody. He's like, oh crap. Back to this. Sorry. Karga is injured, and but the child he hasn't managed to use the force to heal him. In return, Karga murders his associates and confesses the original plan to shoot Manda and take the child to the client. Instead, Karga pretends that Dune has captured the Mandalorian with Quill returns to the child to the ship. When they arrive at the bar where the client is, the client contacts his boss, Moff Gideon, well, his boss, but fortunately, he opens fire, killing the client and his, and his bodyguards, which revealed to be a squad of death troopers. And a tie fire mass of land, revealing the client's boss, <laughs> which he knows down number. Trapping Mando, Karga, Dune inside. Unfortunately, a squad of scout troopers to scout kill Quill and take the child. Which ends to the final episode for season one, chapter eight, Redemption, directed by Taika Watiti and written by John Farrow. IG-11 has to defeat the scout troopers, which of course reveals a scene where one of them tried to see gro the child until the child bets, bites the <laughs> scout trooper's finger, but unfortunately becomes a dickhole by punching him hard. I mean really hard, like, boonky. And of course, IG-11 appears and defeats the scout troopers rescuing the child. Back at the town where the where Gideon, where the boss, now known as Moff Gideon, a foreign imperial intelligence officer, informs him, informs Karga, do and Mando that they are will be executed if they don't hand the child over. That's when he starts revealing everybody's names, like Mando's name in Jarin, which is now revealed. Including Cara Dune as a former Republic Rebellion shock trooper, which of course
they found out who he actually is. That's Moff Gideon. Which, the shocker part is... They thought he was executed by the New Republic for war crimes. Which, it turns out, he survived. And also... We get a flashback when Karga asks, wait, he's supposed to be Mandalorian. Are you supposed to be a race? When Derek Caradu mentioned, corrects him, say, it's not a race. It's a creed. And soon we get a flashback of him as a child with his parents. And this is like during the the Clone Wars. We see droid, droid gunships over the, attacking his town, his village. A squad of droid gunships. And soon, we keep encountering super battle droids, which, oh boy, what's the last time you saw a super battle droid in live action before? Not since the uh, prequel trilogy of episode 2 and 3. Of course, the, his, his parents managed to put his, in a little hiding place before they were killed off screen. And soon he's been found by a super battle droid before the super battle droid can def terminate him. That droid, the super battle droid has been defeated by a group of Mandalorians bearing the crest, the logo of Death Watch. Who saved them. Which of course, they take him under a wing, becoming one of their own. Which of course, he was rescued by Death Watch. And the managed to defeat the squad of super battle droids. Which of course... Reveals why he hates droids because of that. And back to here. During present day, IGLN starts his campaign of saving the others, which of course is pretty funny. How do you defeat a super a assassin droid with that much skills? Moff Gideon leaves, of course. They managed to. When IG-11 arrived, that's when everybody managed to defeat them. Unfortunately, things get a little messy when I think one of the uh, death troopers managed to shoot the... Uh, I can't remember the name of the system. It's the kind of like a minigun, but deadlier, which injures, injures Mando severely. And they go back inside the bar. Well, yeah, fun fact. Kara had a little fun defeating a, a, a squad of death troopers in the bar. Which, oh boy. They're not easy. And soon a new challenger appears. A flame trooper. No, I forgot the name of this type of, fl this type of storm trooper. This storm, this stormtrooper appeared in Star Wars Battlefront. It's not called a flame trooper. I forgot the name of it. Shit. Sorry, I had to call it the flame trooper because I forgot the actual name. It's actually a longer but seriously, it's menacing. That that trooper carrying a flamethrower. Blasting the fire in that bar like holy shit. It means business. Is it about the full flames at the at, our, at Dune, Manda, well Ninjarin, Karga? He mess the child mess to bl force block the fire and pushes to back send the fire back to the flame trooper. Causing his, his, you know, his fuel tank to explode, killing it, killing the trooper. They managed, I've cared to mass to bust through a sore entrance, but then Jaren tells her to take the child with her and give him a medallion, telling her that the jar sent them them. But IG 11. Who remember wants to heal him, but of course, Mando Dinjarin tells him that no one has seen him without his helmet alive. Which the yeah, assassin droid refers the words, "He's not even alive. 
he's not human. Which, of course, we get to see his face. If I can see Din Djarin's face, all bloodied up from the explosion, IG-11 managed to heal him with a Bacto spray. As the other managed to walk inside the sewer system, which they're surprised the Mando all healed up. Unfortunately, when they arrive at the culvert, they see a disturbing scene. A pile of Mandalorian armor. Battered and broken. Mando always for a punch at Karga, believing to be his goons, but fortunately, the armor appears and explains that the other two went to hiding and they're are relocating. Of course, she asks, What was the, the cause of all this? When he when they show him the child, when she says it's defendless, that's when Mando describes his powers, that's when she knows what he actually is. Telling the story of the fate of Mandalore the Alderman and and against the Jedi, which of course he doesn't know who the Jedi are. <laughs> Soon she tells her that's his new task. He he's a foundling. He must take him to his people. To complete his task to find his people. Also, when they hear stormtroopers come in, she gives him a jetpack and leaves. And while she distracts the stormtroopers as they arrive, <laughs> okay. This is right here where you see her sitting there next to the forge. And you see a squad stormtrooper pointing their guns, rifles, at blasters at her. She managed to defeat them with ease with only a hammer and a <coughs> welding tool. Managed to defeat all of them. Even said it wanted them to the burning forge. As they try to escape to the lava flow. They know there'll be an ambush, but IGLM decides it's time for him to sacrifice his life by self-destructing. As he managed to walk out, activate his self-destruct, defeating the whole squad of stormtroopers. They thought they are free, but nope. Moff Gideon appears in his TIE fighter, blasting everything. Mando managed to activate his jetpack and managed to put detonators on the TIE Fighter causing it to crash. Believing that Gideon has been killed. Mando takes the child and starts his mission to find his, find the, his people, the Jedi, leaving Cara Dune and Karga to help rebuild Navarro. As they leave, we get a glimpse of Jawas trying to salvage some wreckage from Gideon's TIE Fighter until we notice something cutting through the side of the TIE Fighter's a hull. Gideon has the Darksaber. And that leads us a question. Where the fuck did he get the Darksaber? Because the last time we saw the Darksaber... It was in Star Wars Rebels, where Sabine gave Bo-Katan the Darksaber, since she's the rightful ruler of Mandalore. That gives us a question. How did Gideon get the Darksaber? And we know he'll be returning for Season 2. But yeah, folks, and after the completion of Season 1, whole oh boy, a whole lot... A boom starts coming. Not just that, including merchandise, but specifically the child. Which, of course, when Farrell chooses not to review the child in any marketing for the series after a discussion with Donald Glover during the making of The Lion King, in which Glover noted the audience appreciated being surprised, it does not happen very much. Frost stated Star Disney was not only bored on board with the decision, <coughs> even though it meant they were unable to begin work on merchandise featuring the character. Due to the potential of those merchandise plan to leak reveal the character early, the mint of the merchandise of the character could not be ready for Christmas or holiday season. 
After the series premiered, the child became a breakout character which had more attention on social media than the Democrat running for presidential at the time. <laughs> which in 2019 became the huge demand merchandise ever. Companies such as Hasbro have begun work on the child merchandise as well, but it would not be ready until 2020. <laughs> yeah, we're in the pandemic. Ugh. I can't remember when the child first appeared or when people dubbed the child Baby Yoda. That was actually his unofficial name by everybody. Baby Yoda. <laughs> but yeah. Actually, I own a Baby Yoda, but it's not the, uh, you know, the big one. It's like one of those small little figurines, statuettes. It's him in a pot. A spittoon from season two. You know, when you went, went back to Tatooine, mean the Marshal? On Tatooine, when he jumps inside the pot? That one. But yeah, those are my thoughts on season one of The Mandalorian, to me. I consider it as a, a, a big step because after this, it gets way bigger on the journey. But yeah, folks, let me know in the comments down below what you think of season one of The Mandalorian. And remember, this is a three part, so to, so next one will be part two for season two. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, if, if we're never to go hit one million subscribers because. Hey, come on. We need those, uh, we need those 1 million subscribers to aim our goal here. It's already been 11 years. Just give us our piece of cake. Don't make it to the puppy eye face. <laughs> but yeah, until then, have a great day, everybody. Peace out. Stay safe. Be cool.